Hi there and welcome to the video. Today I'm going to share with you the number one most effective way to speed up Photopea and make everything as smooth as possible. Now I've done a video that covers this topic before but this was one fundamental technique that I missed off it and I really believe now that it's you should focus on this first and see what a huge difference it's going to make to your project. So as you can see here, I've got a picture of a snail, which I downloaded from a free stock website. I will share a link in the description below. And just as a benchmark, so we can see where we're at, I'm just gonna click on this duplicated layer. So as you can see, there's just a couple of layers and a few adjustments, nothing special. And I'm gonna to go to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. I'm just gonna use this basic blur as a little benchmark to see how responsive or not making this adjustment would be. So let me click and drag to the right hand side to increase the blur on this image. And as you can see, it's extremely slow to respond to the point where that doesn't even look like it's, it's doing anything. There we go. It's slowly going up. As you can see, this is, this is completely awful. Nowhere near real time. As you can see by the document, it's only got a few layers. This really isn't a heavy file at all. So it shouldn't have problems with this doing a basic Gaussian blur. So it's almost unusable at this point, as I'm sure you can agree, it's painful. So I'm gonna come out of that. And if you experience things like that on your own documents, especially when they're not very big, you might be quick to blame. Maybe you don't think your computer's very good or whatever, but the computer I'm on now is a pretty high spec machine with a lot of RAM and it's still struggling with that very basic function. So the main thing you can do to influence overall speed and performance in Photop is consider optimum image size. And what I mean by that is we'll go to the image menu here and I'm going to go down to image size. Now this was just a standard photo I downloaded from a stock site. Nothing special. I've not done anything else to it. And we can see the image size, so the, the image dimension is 6,000 by 4,000 pixels, 72 DPI. Now that is a large file. I mean, it's probably kind of standard from what you get off, you know, most cameras, most consumer cameras and things like that. And now with the sort of race between mobile phone brands to sort of compete on megapixel count and things like that, you find that most devices these days will output by default a very large um, pixel dimension to the files, like a large megapixel count. And this is actually counterintuitive because like for this image, say, unless we wanted to print this on like a poster where we need a high resolution and large image if this is just going to be used for social media or any kind of online use this is way bigger than it would ever need to be so i'm just going to reduce that width down to let's just say 2000 pixels and because i've got the little chain link icon selected there it will automatically adjust the height to keep it in the same aspect ratio i'm just going to click ok so we're just shrinking it down it's still a reasonable size and here's a tip, if you press Command or Control and R, it brings up your rulers. And then it also brings up in the bottom left corner, the percentage of magnification you're currently at, which is handy to know. So now if I zoom in, it's 25%, 33, 50. So if I zoom to 100% and I'm recording this in 1080p, you'll see visually how huge that image still is. So if this was being used on any kind of social media or web use, it's still visibly a huge file. You know, it could easily be even smaller than this. Let me just zoom out a bit so we can see what we're doing. Turn off the rulers. But now we've sort of optimized the file size, the image dimensions to a more realistic use for us, which is web, which is going to be relevant to probably most images you're working on unless they're print. If we now run the same test again, we'll go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And now let's repeat the same motion as earlier. You can see it's almost completely real time now. Look how more responsive and smooth that is compared to earlier. It was almost completely unusable. And all we've done here is we've just resized the image to a more appropriate image size for general web use. There isn't an exact size. It depends on what you need. But for general web use, the files will not need to be almost anywhere close to how big this file was. Um, 
and it can just make a massive difference. So now that speed bump you've got in that Gaussian blur, which was huge, is now going to be the same and it's going to roll out to other adjustments you'd make in the document like filters, other adjustment layers, whether you're cloning, you're just brushing using the brush tool, anything that you would find slow or laggy just by reducing the physical file dimensions down to something a bit more sensible is lightening the load of photo piece processing so much it's going to be a night and day difference working on things now of course you've got to be careful that you don't make the image too small that then it isn't suitable for what it needs to be but if you can work out in advance how big does that image need to be what's the maximum size it's likely to be used at on online or whatever and you work to that from this very start you're going to have it's going to be a dream working in photo p you're not going to be battling against the slowness and lag that photo p is kind of known for you're giving the image a tailor-made dimension that then photo p is going to be able to use and work a heck of a lot more efficiently too